Well, it's a wonderful fall Monday morning, and we just finished up Scott's 2023 Jeep JT Gladiator Rubicon. Scott gave us a call. His Jeep was fairly new, only 3,700 miles on it, and said uh, he's looking to go all in. No halfway, no stages. Let's rip it apart. Let's build it. Let's get it done right. And so that's exactly what we did. So to start with, this thing has motorbuilt front and rear bumpers. It's got a worn 10S Xeon winch in the front. Got the Factor 55 Ultralink with the factory worn Fairlead. Take a look in here and you have the Baja Designs Squadron Pros flush mounted into the front bumper, really nice and clean. So when it comes to axles and you wanna do it one time and one time only, what do you do? Well. JT, heavy vehicle, so the 72 and a half inch Dynatrack Dane 80 rear and the HD Dana 60 front. In the front, he decided to go ahead and opt for RCVs as well. It's the wider axle with RCVs, pretty much everything you can do to dial this thing in, right? 35 spline in the front, 40 spline in the rear, 538s, E-lockers front and rear hooked up to the factory switches. So it does have our WFO track bars front and rear with the chromoly uniballs, FK rod ends. And then to top that off, you can see right here, that is our WFO heavy duty track bar brace as well. We went ahead and put our Instinctor Series ADS 2.5 inch shocks in the front. So these are 2.5 inch smooth bodies uh, with compression clickers. As far as coils go in the front, these are the Metal Cloak 4.5 front coil springs. And in order to get the Gladiators or the JTs to sit level how we like it, it has 3.5 inch coils in the rear. As far as the front sway bar goes, kept the factory sway bar with the factory electronic disconnect, didn't change that on this one. It does have our WFO long arm on it. And on the JTs, we do basically the long arm front, our heavy duty cross member, all integrated. And then in the rear, what we call mid arm, which is basically just our upper and lower control arms that are fully adjustable. And as you can see, even at this height, the arms are almost flat with the ground. So that's what maintains a really nice ride. In the rear, once again, ADS shocks with the clickers, 2.5 smooth bodies, and then did a rock jock, anti-rock sway bar in the rear just to button this up. Everybody always knows on the JTs, you bend these tabs that are on the frame for the factory sway bar drop downs because it's flipped. The sway bars on the axle with drop downs going up instead of being all tucked away and clean like this. One of the things that he wanted to confirm is that this was the end all, you know, do everything vehicle. So some of the things he went with like these Battleborn wheels, 17 inch, forged wheels, uh, 40 inch Ditto trail grapplers. One of the things that's a little different on this one that we haven't done yet, I don't believe, is we did Motobilt front fenders, Motobilt inner fenders, and then color match painted the fenders themselves, powder coated the inners. I will tell you that their inner fenders and the outer fenders are super cohesive. They go together really well. The mounting hardware, the tabs, it looks like they're supposed to be together. Some people's inner fenders and fenders don't match up well. I will tell you that this seemed to match up really well. We kept with the kind of raw aluminum look on the inner fender here with these vents, and then I think this detail came out pretty cool. A little bit of powder coat and a little bit of aluminum still show off that motorbuilt emblem. Um, as far as the rock sliders go, this thing is a land yacht. So yes, the sliders are gonna hit. Once again, motorbuilt frame mounted fully well to the frame, fully rigid. One of the things that you gotta watch out always on these is the rear foot will hit the frame in kind of a weird spot. And because we have the mid arm on this, don't have to worry about it. It can keep where it is and no problem with our mid arm. Didn't have to modify the uh, rock slider. While we're down here, you can see the front to rear full motorbuilt skid plates that we powder coated our Speedway black color, the same color as our Lynx and our long arm kit. So it's skidded from front to rear. Uh, one of the things we did different in this one is we did go with a two piece rear drive shaft. In the past, we've done a lot of one piece because 
They run smooth, there's no vibration. You don't have to worry about the carrier bearing. It just works. On this one, we want to, you know, he's going to do some hardcore four wheel and we want to give him a little bit more breakover point. So we did a two piece 1350 CV big carrier bearing setup in the rear for the rear drive line. The front 1350 CV rear drive line on two inch tube 120 wall. Nothing really going on inside uh, fancy at all. I mean, the interior is as factory. Nothing changed because the sway bar still disconnects on the dash and the um, lockers still are used on the dash. The only thing that we have there is we have backup lights and rock lights that are on the factory accessory switches. Um, normally we like to put the backup lights just right to the tail light so they come on when you hit reverse and he wanted to have that option to have them on or off uh, on this vehicle as he wanted to. So I almost forgot about the air compressor. So you're airing down your tires, you gotta air them back up. Like we always do, ARB dual compressor under the seat, chuck right there, button right here, just like that, air compressor. Something to be noted that we didn't do but is on this Jeep is he has uh, someone else's aftermarket bumper which is kind of an overlander style which works well, houses a lot of stuff. So some more Squadron Pro Baja Designs lights, License plate in the middle, toe points, but it does have a swinging rack here. So I've never even used it. So let's see how it works. And just like that, tire swings, locks in, and gas cans or water cans, cans swing and uh, lock in. Got the camera mounted here, which is interesting because the stock camera is here, but it gets covered by the swinging racks. So the camera gets lowered down underneath the swinging racks and you still have a tire camera. This setup is pretty decent if you're into that style and looking for that extra space on your JT. True 40 inch tire on the back is a spare. You can't have 40s and one tons without hydro assist. So hydro assist mounted right down here with the Dynatrack axles. The axle came with the skid, ram tucked in nice. Um, this has the bracket on the motor. It was not an e-torque has a PSC pump, reservoir, cooler tucked up in here too. You can see our WFO track bars front and rear. All in all, a lot of things touch, but still kind of a clean and simple build. Daily driver, wheeler, kind of overlander. The motorbuilt fenders are definitely tucked in tight and nice and color matching was definitely cool to do. So enjoy building this thing. Can't wait to see them uh, beat it down out on the trail.